Hello, welcome to the World Magic Cup Qualifier Semifinals. Matt Hoey here on the left with Black White Midrange. His opponent, Josh Bauer, on the right with Black Devotion Splashing Green. The winner will be in the finals versus Andrew Beckstrom with Blue Devotion. Matt Hoey's going to open up with the first play of the game on his turn two with a pack rat. Pa passing over to Josh Bauer. Josh Bauer untaps, also has a pack rat in his hand, but it looks like he's just passing the turn. In for one. Matt docks Josh down to 19. If you're just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan here with Brian Cole. This is the semifinal match. Matt Hoey, a very well-known player in the Chicagoland area, playing Black-White Devotion, a list quite similar to the list played by uh, Channel Fireball Pantheon, the more controlling version played by Owen Turtenwald and... William Jensen at Pro Tour M15 in Portland. Josh Bauer playing Black Devotion with a tiny little splash of green for the usual suspects of Main Deck, Abrupt Decay, and Sideboard Golgari Charm. Lifebane Zombie just gives some information, but it's good information. We can check out Matt Hoey's hand here. He has a pair of Bioblights, an Underworld Connections, and a backup copy of Packrat, as well as another Black White Scryland. Information is always good. These Lifebane Zombies, um, they do have actual targets in Matt Hoey's deck. Blood Baron of Viscopa is uh, a card that can be nabbed by that Lifebane Zombie, which is now dead thanks to the Bile Blight. Packrat versus uh, Land and Immutavolt. Temple leaves the card on top. In for one. Three mana, is it going to be connections? It is, connections on that temple. Josh is taking a more reactive stance. I, th I believe he has a pack rat in his opening hand that he chose not to play. I think he had a bio blight and he was tr hoping to get a little more, um, a little more real estate out of that Hoey. <laughs> but Hoey's content with just attacking for one a turn with his rat. Josh Bauer here. I think it looks like he's stuck on mana. One, two, three mana. Underworld connections on his tapped land. Unless he follows it up with a temple. Yep, he's stuck on mana. And now we have Packrat and Underworld connections doing uh, a lot of action together here. This is a potent combination. Reminds me of Liliana Dark Confidant in terms of how powerful it is. And here's a Desecration Demon. Now, if you read the excellent Zvi Mauschewitz article about just keep making rats, you might wonder, why did he cast Desecration Demon? Bile Blight. Bile Blight is a real card, and the just keep making rats plan sometimes doesn't work out. Yeah, Bile Blight just changed everything when it got printed. Um, it, it's, it's pretty unsafe to make rats, actually. You're just handing them card advantage if, uh, if you do in many times. Temple of Malice puts a card on the bottom. Josh Bauer draws another card. Mm -hmm. Drops a little bit now, and he's looking for, I he's got to do a little bit of work here on a lot of fronts. I think he's going to lay his own rat. So now the issue is that demon is going to probably get one huge hit in, at least. Would you say this matchup is about, like, um, getting the answers to each other's pack rats out of their hands so that they can just go, go wild with them? Well, I mean, you, you as you noted earlier, Josh Bauer did not drop that earlier rat, I think precisely for that very reason. Mm -hmm. Now Matt Hoey here. He's got a lot of options. Night Vale Spectre, Devour Flesh, and uh, I think we're going to see a Devour. That's how it starts. One life for Josh Bauer. In for seven, and he's content to have it be just the seven. Three more mana is going to be Night Vale. Night Vale. Wow, all of the engines here. We've got the Underworld Connections. We've got the Night Vale Spectre. And a pack rat starting, ready to start doing work. Sign and Blood looks pretty anemic compared to that other side of the table. He does have a Grey Merchant if he can just live a little bit longer. Um, but he's definitely on the ropes here. D down to 10, facing off against 
nine power in play, but 11 if you count the Muta Vault. Well, and it, it's worth counting. <laughs> One of the things, Josh Bauer here, um, he stumbled a little bit to begin. And then in addition to that, Matt Hoey, as the number three seed, got the option for the play. And that stumble combined with the extra turn meant that, uh, that Matt Hoey is just way ahead. And it's going to be really hard for Josh Bauer to come back. Okay. Josh, kind of in the tank here. He's got an abrupt good decay. He, uh, abrupt decay can kill one of the many scary things on the table. There are three targets. He's, He's going to draw a card. See if that helps. Thought sees. To see what he does next. I, I mean, just looking at this, I think that a, a minor miracle is going to have to happen for Josh Bauer to pull out this first game. It doesn't look like he has an answer to that demon, and that's what's going to cause him real trouble. And death to the pack rat. And uh, this means I think that uh, Josh Bauer is planning on sacrificing his Mutavault during um, the trigger of the desecration demon. That looks to me to be the only way he's going to live. And he's like, ah, how about we kill that, and then you die. Boom, dead. To our sideboards. What does uh, Josh Bauer have in the sideboard? Got 15 cards? What do we got? Well, um, the the number one card we've been seeing in the Black Mirror it seems to be Erebos. It, 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 it's just a ton of work in the games we've seen it come out. He has one copy of that. Uh, one copy of Underworld Connections, which I'm sure is going to come in. Uh, the this Dark Betrayal card could come in handy against the black creatures in uh, <laughs> Hoey's deck. Um, and maybe, uh, and I'm guessing he's going to go up to the four copies of Bioblight Bio to deal with Packrat. Um. Yeah, the, uh, the Golgari charm is interesting because he knows his opponent is a black-white mid-range list, which means that there are cards like Banishing Light. On the other hand, Matt Hoey knows that Josh Bauer knows that he has Banishing Light. And he must have known that. <laughs> so it could get into that Princess Bride game of mm -hmm. do I keep these Banishing Lights in, etc. Golgari Charm still good against other removal. Can also do some um, math tricks on pack rats. So that's certainly a, a real possible card. Matt Hoey's cards. Sin Collector um, is a card we saw him bring in before in this matchup. I expect to see that. The Erebos God of the Dead that you mentioned, also a card to bring in. The fourth Underworld Connections, um, almost certainly going to come in. Deicide is interesting in that it can get rid of that Underworld Connections and can get rid of that Erebos. I expect to see Matt Hoey bring in the one Deicide. He's not going to choke on it like a deck that might bring in multiple Deicides. And then the question becomes, uh, you know, between Sin Collector and Duress, do you want to bring in the whole amount? Some people really like doing that, and other people feel like it's similar to the modern Jund on Jund, where you can get into a late game where there's not much going on, and then you top deck a Duress, and you feel like you basically just died. Um, so I have heard both sides of the equation on the question of do you max out on the duress style discard or not, and we'll have to see what Matt Hoey does. Personally, I think I'd shy away from it. it um, I'd, I'd rather keep my draws live if in the mid-game. It, it, it feels like these games often go kind of long, l longer. Like it would, th There's a few games where like one deck will just like overtake the other, but usually it's because the second deck stumbled. Yeah, Thought Seize is a little different in this uh, situation just because being able to knock that rat, being able to knock that demon, taking those out, all of those creatures that uh, the Duress can't hit, they matter enough that I think that uh, most people, the consensus is keep in your Thought Seizes no matter what. Duress, I've heard debates on both sides of the issue. Hmm. If you're just joining us, this is the semifinal match between Matt Hoey on the left with Black White Midrange and Josh Bauer on the right. 295 players, currently down to just three. One of these players is going to be facing Chicago's Andrew Beckstrom. You might remember Beckstrom from his Grand Prix Louisville top eight finish. And if you're in the Midwest, you've probably seen him around at PTQs being kind of an end boss the last uh, maybe year or maybe even a year and a half. And uh, 
both of these players here, Matt Hoey and Josh Bauer, have been playing some great magic. As we said earlier about Matt Hoey, Matt Hoey is a Chicago area player, and he's been somebody that you would be certain to recognize if you're in the area. Josh Bauer, I believe, is a local player, but wherever he's from, certainly this whole weekend, he's been playing some great magic. I've happened to see him in two different tournaments, and in both of those tournaments, playing great, great games all weekend. Yeah, his play's been really fantastic yeah. for everything we've seen, and it, it seems like he has a great grip on this, great grip on the model black archetype. Also interesting for me about Josh Bauer is he was contributing to other conversations that I heard players having about numerous archetypes. So he doesn't just know his deck. seems like he knows the standard format at large. Mm -hmm. And to me, that sounds like he's somebody that's probably put in a lot of time and is very prepared for this event. You can see uh, right now the players offering each other their decks, and we're going to check for mulligans. And with any luck, we're going to have a great game two here. And perhaps we'll go to a game three, but whatever the case may be, Josh Bauer here on the play. This is a huge advantage in this kind of matchup, largely because you get that opportunity to get the god draw, thought season to pack rat. Even though Bioblight exists, you can still run away with the game with that simple opening. Hoey looks a little landlight here, um, but yeah. I'm not sure that's not, that isn't where you want to be in the <laughs> model black beer. Let's see what his hand is. Thoughtseize, Deicide, Elspeth, Bile Blight, Night Veil Spectre, Banishing Light, and two lands. All these spells. I mean, it depends on what's in Josh Bauer's hand. We haven't seen it, but uh, Banishing Light could stop a pack rat draw, I'm sorry, not banishing, bile blight, whereas banishing light, if Josh Bauer goes down a pack rat draw, will be a turn behind. Yeah. So, uh, and that's all assuming that a third land is even drawn. Yeah, I mean, and Bauer also has, like, rebuys of he, on a creature that gets removed by banishing light because he has an abrupt decay as main deck and um, maybe even Golgari Charm thinking it through and again we can't see uh, Josh Bauer's hand so we can't go through his thought process there's a little glimpse I see a land I think that might be a devour flesh but that was such a small glimpse Josh Bauer taking his time thinking it through Let's see devour flesh for sure on the other side of the uh, the table you can see the reason that most people have um, that have gone to black white midrange have done it Elspeth and that's the card that uh, Josh Bauer takes. W interesting, though, only two mana in Matt Hoey's hand, and he takes the Elspeth. Yeah, that's, that's pretty mind-blowing. Maybe, maybe that card is just that devastating in this matchup. But. Well, I kind of wonder if he says to himself, this game will get there. Maybe his draw is just that mm -hmm. slow. Yeah. Might have just given it Hoey a good signal that he's um, very threat light. We see an abrupt decay. Does he have, there it is, there is the third mana, so he's not stuck. Overgrown Tomb, pass, and Hoey, is that a whiff? Does he, is he stuck on, oh, he's passing it back. Ouch. Hmm. Still might not charm. be in trouble. <laughs> I think we're going to see, uh, that looks like a Mutavault. Pass, yeah, I think Josh Bauer said that uh, he wanted to take the Elspeth because he thought his hand was going to be slow as syrup. Here's the thought sees. And we'll get our first good look at Josh Bauer's hand here. He has Kay. a Golgari Charm, an Abrupt Decay, a de and two Devour Fleshes, and yeah. one extra one. I am beginning to see why he chose that Elspeth. This was a hand that, uh, mm -hmm. full of answers and absolutely no action. Especially great answers for Hoey's hand. Is that... Um, Two Underworld Connections, Night Veil Spectre, Bile Blight, Banishing Light. Is that a Deicide and another Banishing Light? So these players are both on the answer everything uh, draw. Two damage in, free two damage. Thoughtseize, what you got over there? Connections, Connections, Night Veil, Bile Blight, Deicide, Banishing Light, Banishing Light. <laughs> wow. I mean, do you take the yeah. connections here so that they've only got one mm -hmm. connections that you can Golgari Charm and a creature that you can kill with abundant creature removal? Um, I don't even know where to start with this. <laughs> yeah, there's the connections. The connections goes away. In for two. The, 
That's definitely a mana screwed hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we finally see a third mana in the form of Mutavault. Right. And uh, he knows that there's a a uh, Golgari charm in Josh Bauer's hand. So I wonder if he's going to try to hold on and wait for another um, discard spell to protect the connections in hand. Passes the turn. Josh Bauer now in uh, the driver's seat. If he attacks with his Mutavolt, it can be Bile Blighted. And he knows it. He says, got the Bile Blight? If you're Matt Hoey, you've got to ask. Mm. He knows I've got it. Does he want me to use it? Yeah, do you, do you think Hoey playing like this means he's on like the heavy duress plan? Possibly. Um. Maybe. I mean, let's see. And he looks, more information, the same information. I mean, I wouldn't think he'd be hoping to draw another Thoughtseize before he like starts starts acting here. End of the turn, Bile Blight hits the Mutavault. And he does have a Banishing Light if he wants to to remove that Life Bane zombie. But remember, Golgari Charm in hand for Josh Bauer. Temple. This is a great draw for Matt. Just finding yeah. some sort of play here. He needed a Temple. A Temple's probably gives him a very good percentage to draw a land next turn. And... Uh, Vanishing Light, one of two in hand. Get rid of that Life Bane zombie. And Josh Bauer, he can remove the Banishing Light, but he knows there's another Banishing Light in hand, and that uh, that uh, Underworld Connections is just way more dangerous. Passes the turn back. Thought sees. This is the card that uh, <laughs> what he was, that he was for. waiting for. Wow! He just casts the Connections to draw a card. This is a surprise to me. Let's see what happens because of it. Yeah, I thought he was trying to set up for a Thoughtseize. And now I wonder if we're just going to see a Golgari Charm get rid of that Underworld Connections. That makes sense Boom. to me. Boom. I mean, he drew the Thoughtseize to get rid of it. Uh, that's what I thought. I don't know. I guess that wasn't his line. And uh, remember, Matt Hoey has a Banishing Light, a Deicide in hand, and uh, a Night Veil Spectre as well. He just drawn another land. He just got to a fifth land, and now, now it's kind of turning around his mana screw hand. Uh, he's, now he's now he's threat heavy. <laughs> Does he have an Erebos in hand? I think I saw one. Here comes the Night Veil Spectre. Night Veil Spectre can be killed in about three million ways, but the Devour Fleshes would eat a Mutavault first. Luckily, Josh has two. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I'm Josh Bauer here, I actually think I want the Mutavault to die. And uh, I Ho guess Hoey does. Hoey's Hoey not agrees. giving up any lands. Hoey yeah. agrees. <laughs> Untap. Josh Bauer. Looking for some action. Gets a swamp. Answer, answer, answer. And you know what? We're getting to that mm. point where that Elspeth actually would have... Uh, yeah, he'd be <laughs> losing to this Elspeth right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, wow. Not a great hand. Devour Flesh. Heroes Downfall. Swamp. And uh, there goes the downfall. I think we're going to see Night Veil Spectre. And this time, I think the Mutavolt actually doesn't mind uh, being eaten. Right. Does Josh then wait mm. for a better opportunity? I mean, he might be bound by mana. He might draw something like an Erebos off the top. So I think he might have to cast it right now just to hope for a good draw. And now we'll see what Hoey decides. This time he wants to get rid of that Mutavault. And now Josh Bauer is looking for something really good right now. Does he have it? It is a pack rat. That's not bad. That's not bad. Now, uh, it really isn't. <laughs> let's see. Erebos, pack rat, deicide, banishing light in hand for Matt Hoey. And now the, oh, the never-ending stream of problems that a mm. unanswered specter represents. Yeah, and Hoey also just picked up a pack rat. And his might be a little bit better with this specter gone. I think that uh, barring some kind of uh, earthquake or other minor catastrophe, <laughs> Hoey is so deeply in control, it's going to have to be runner after runner after runner for Josh Bauer to... Um, really effectively recover from this opening. I mean, if I if either player draws a bile blight, and uh, fake rat is created, and then Hoey creates his own rat. 
Now, getting rid of those banishing lights would be a good start. But what do we what do we have? I think you drew a Golgari charm. Which gives him a <laughs> a wide range of choices if they if he did. <laughs> he has two banishing lights he could just he could get rid of. Or the pack rat. And uh, Josh Bauer protecting that draw from our cameras very, very aggressively. Yeah. And with the pack rat. Yeah, I guess if he if he charms the rats he he loses too, so And Matt Hoey uh, looks like he's taking one. Night Vale Spectre, still very scary. Is this going to be a demon? No, oh, it's a demon. Demon, that's a good card here. I mean, granted, the Pack Rat can feed the demon. And is that a Erebos, Banishing Light, and last card? One, two, three, four mana. Erebos. Mm, that Erebos walks. Surprise. And he passes the turn back. Wow. Okay. I thought he would try to get the Spectre through there. I thought he would try to get the Spectre through as well. But I mean, getting an Erebos on the table, that's not... Um, and he says, Demon Trigger, here I come. Matt Hoey says, okay. Six... That Drops Hoey down to nine. God, I mean, a gray merchant. Oh, my God. Double demon. <sighs> Not as good as double dragon, but, you know. So <laughs> some great cards off the top for Josh. <sighs> wow. And I actually think that Matt is in trouble now. Double bile blight, never <laughs> mind. <laughs> Where did those come from? <laughs> Well, I thought that Matt Hoey was in trouble, but Double Bile Blight says that says differently. <laughs> in comes the team, um, except for he decides. Never mind on that pack rat. Yeah, Arabos, not, not ready to trade pack rats. Erebos right walks. Night Vale Spectre, gonna hit here. Wow. Well, I can't believe he had Double Bile Blight. That was crazy. <laughs> I mean, I thought that uh, Josh Bauer's draws there were basically. What you perfect. would hope for, <laughs> the perfect two draws, but that double Bile Blight. We're seeing a possible chump block here, but what does this leave him? Nothing. He has nothing. No hand. What, is, what can he hope for? I mean, not so much. Top card gets, uh, is that a, wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And Josh Bauer might be in the last turn of his, uh, his tournament here. Land, go, handshake. And Matt Hoey will go on to the finals to play Chicago's own BK. <laughs> 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 Andrew Beckstrom. <laughs> oh, wow. So uh, Josh Bauer's tournament has ended, and Matt Hoey now moves forward 2-0. Uh,